And when I uh, prepared this talk, I found, and did the usual literature research, I actually found that there was very little literature in, in terms of figures on unusual presentations. And uh, all the things I found were quite old. So this turns out to be a sort of pictorial review and case series of cases in which we, in our institution, did not make the correct diagnosis, or at least it took us quite some time to make the correct diagnosis. These are my disclosures, and this is a, the TV tower in Düsseldorf, Germany, on the 60th birthday of our county. Uh, before talking about unusual presentations, I'd like to review the typical presentations of lung cancer, and I'll start with non-small cell lung cancer. And all of you, particularly those who are in the field of radiology for a bit longer, know this presentation of a, an atelectasis. And we can guess that the, the, the tumor causing the atelectasis is the convex shape at the bottom of the consolidation. And this is a CT scan of the same patient shown just the atelectic right upper lobe and some lymph node enlargement at the same level. The, the tumor is not on this side. Uh, we now have learned uh, that uh, this is a rather late stage because even uh, tumors presenting with atelectasis usually result from smaller uh, nodules or masses and only if they uh, uh, grow uh, towards the hilum they cause atelectasis at that degree. So the typical non-small cell lung cancer starts as a nodule or mass um, uh, and only causes atelect atelectasis later and typically uh, the nodular mass is not well-defined and not rounded, so these are typical examples like the ones uh, Theresa showed, showing uh, speculation, uh, some lobulation in both of these cases, and we uh, suspect that the speculation may be due to cancer, lymphangitic spread, but we know it can also be desmoplastic reaction, or maybe some of those may be subsegmental atelectasis but an irregular, lobulated, speculated appearance is the common uh, appearance for particularly non-small cell lung cancer. So these are all typical examples uh, showing the features I've just mentioned. Less common but still quite typical is uh, central necrosis, and in some tumors you may just uh, be able to discern uh, the lower density of the necrotic part in the center compared to some increased density in contrast-enhanced um, scans. In the viable part of the tumor, sometimes there may be little areas of air in the tumors, and sometimes they are larger, but this basically reflects the fact that the necrosis uh, has got access to the bronchial tree, so necrosis has been cuffed up and air has been able to enter the tumor. This is a common feature most commonly found in squamous cell carcinoma, but also present in the other entities of non-small cell lung cancer. So to summarize the typical findings, uh, we usually deal with a peripheral or central located nodule or mass. They're usually ill-defined, speculated, and lobulated. They may be associated with atelectasis or obstructive pneumonitis, or may not. And they may or may not have central necrosis with or, uh, without cavitation. So now I'm going to present some of the uncommon presentations of uh, lung cancer. And in this case, probably most of us uh, in a rather well-defined, rather round uh, lesion would not have thought of uh, non-small cell lung cancer in the first place. The differential diagnosis in a well-defined, round, solid lesion is usually metastasis, although solitary metastases are obviously rare, granuloma or hamartoma. So in a case like this, we should probably uh, look for fat or uh, calcification very carefully. On the other hand, uh, if something does not uh, look like a metastasis because it's ill-defined, uh, lobulated like this case, it may not be um, a metastasis because this was a patient who had two risk factors. One was she was a smoker and second she had had uh, adenocarcinoma of the uterus before. Uh, and then, Although we believed that we were looking at a primary lung cancer just because of the shape, we obtained a biopsy in this lady to rule out, as we thought, metastasis of the endometrial cancer and it turned out that we got a specimen showing adenocarcinoma, which doesn't really help, because both lung and adenometrial carcinoma would be adeno. But when we did, or when our pathologist did immunohistochemistry, all the brown dots here represent cells positive for hormone receptors, and that rules out primary lung cancer. 
So that was a metastasis from the previously treated endometrial cancer, despite the appearance which was really suggestive of uh, primary lung cancer. On the other side of the spectrum, away from the very well-defined uh, round uh, lesion, which is atypical and uh, even less defined than the lobulated or spiculated uh, cases, which I've shown as being typical, we may have very irregular appearances of lesions, which then obviously uh, let, uh, make us think of focal pneumonia in the first place. Both these lesions were biopsied and both represented uh, non-small cell lung cancer, so even if it looks like focal pneumonia, if there's no history to explain this or no laboratory values, it may well represent lung cancer. This is a lady in whom it took us quite some time uh, to make the diagnosis. Uh, she is a non-smoker. She was quite old in her 80s. She was quite breathless and had some mild signs of infection. And this is her plain film. And we reported that as showing consolidation at both lower lung zones, obviously asymmetrical, more pronounced on the left. We were quite convinced that there was no pleural effusion on the right, and we didn't know about the left. And obviously, she has a pacemaker. And in order to better assess the findings, which we thought represented most likely pneumonia, we did a CT scan. And if you analyze these four images, uh, they obviously show that there is bilateral consolidation. They show that there is no pleural uh, effusion, by the way. There are some areas of ground glass. There's air bronchogram. Um, uh, and uh, distant from the consolidation, there are some small centrilobular nodules. So we were still thinking of pneumonia. There were no f features suggesting TB, for example. There was no cavitation. Uh, as I said, we did not have pleural effusion. But then we saw that on the PEC system, we had a previous study of that lady, three months previously. And you can now tell that all these findings obviously progressed over three months. There was a lot of centrilobular nodules here, which obviously later coalesced to form dense consolidation. The extent of the consolidation has spread uh, within this time interval. And this is obviously very, would be very unusual for pneumonia. So that patient received a biopsy and turned out to represent well-differentiated adenocarcinoma with lipidic growth. And that's the type of non-small cell lung cancer which really grows like pneumonia, and that's why the differential diagnosis usually is pneumonia, and these patients are usually treated for pneumonia, and only when there is no resolution uh, with antibiotic therapy, you go back and um, maybe obtain a biopsy and make the diagnosis. And that's actually quite common in our clinical practice. This is another case with appearances on the plain film certainly compatible with pneumonia, and even the CT scan was compatible with pneumonia. The clue often is that the, the clinical signs don't fit. The patient has not got a high fever. Uh, it's a slow uh, pro process which they're developing. The, the drawback is these patients often are non-smokers, uh, particularly if they're women. Uh, the lipidic growth adenocarcinoma occurs in non-smokers. There's another two patients with rather pneumonia-like, infiltration-like areas of consolidation representing uh, uh, adenocarcinoma with lipidic growth. Here's a patient who underwent CT because of chronic cough. And these are some of the representative images. And I think everybody will pick up the uh, segmental collapse here. And everybody will pick up the bronchial wall thickening, actually quite widespread, but uh, predominantly in the right lower lobe. So we thought this was a case of chronic bronchitis. The only um, question we asked is why is it um, centered on just one lobe? Um, these are the main findings, the volume loss and the bronchial wall thickening. Oh, oops. Uh, so that patient underwent bronchoscopy and uh, as a surprise, uh, bronchoscopy revealed a tiny endobronchial squamous cell carcinoma and even in knowing that there must be the lung tumor somewhere, we probably th uh, think that it could be on this slice because the lumen is mostly narrowed on that single slice. Uh, we did three, uh, three D reformats, and still somewhere here or somewhere in uh, there, there must be the tiny endobronchial tumor, which, by the way, is typical, uh, the typical representation of squamous cell carcinoma or small cell carcinoma, whereas, as we heard, 
adenocarcinoma is usually presents with peripheral lesions. A more typical example of volume loss and uh, chronic bronchitis we usually see in another uh, pulmonary tumor, which is carcinate. This is a typical appearance of carcinate with an endoluminal, rather well-defined lesion causing complete obstruction of the left uh, lower lobe bronchus here and some volume loss and some um, minor degree of atelectasis in the lower lobe. So it's typical for carcinate, but rather unusual for, for lung cancer. Here are the findings, which are the clue to the diagnosis. This is a patient who came with mild signs of infection um, and very breathless. She had severe hypoxia. She was very breathless and underwent CT. And we obviously saw a very diffuse, predominantly reticular pattern. Uh, the, the reticular pattern has a lot of nodularity to it. And uh, around, the centri uh, the, uh, around the bronchovascular bundles, there are some additional tissue, so prebronchiovascular thickening, but very, very diffuse disease, bilateral, rather symmetrical, and obviously in a pattern like this, we think about diffuse lung disease. Uh, one example could be lymphangetic spread, but we would also consider sarcoid, and without the nodularity, we would even consider interstitial uh, edema. The giveaway finding in this patient was this slide, which shows the underlying lung cancer. So this was a lady with adenocarcinoma again, and she was only diagnosed with lung cancer when she developed this very, very widespread lymphangitic spread, uh, which caused her symptoms. The final group of rather unusual cases I'd like to present is patients in whom the lung is normal on films and on CT, and I didn't bring lung windows, but both these patients had normal findings on lung windows, so the Predominant finding, obviously, is lymph adenopathy in the um, middle and posterior mediastinum um, with, with no lung lesion. And this is a rather typical manifestation of small cell lung cancer. Uh, and as we don't see an underlying lung lesion in many of the cases, either because it's too small or it's been part of the central masses, the differential diagnosis, as I teach my residents, is, is not non-small cell lung cancer, but it's rather non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. You know that Hodgkin's lymphoma usually presents in the anterior mediastinum, whereas non-Hodgkin's lymphoma involves the middle and posterior mediastinum. So in my clinical routine, this in, an, in a new patient with no histologic diagnosis, the differential is uh, small cell lung cancer versus non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I've brought a few more cases here with a very asymmetrical hyla mass, but with no lung lesion. Here's another patient with a right hyla mass on plain film, and again, right hyla and mediastinal lymph adenopathy due to small cell lung cancer, and no discrete lung nodule seen anywhere. So, as a take-home message of these case series, as I like to call it, if you see consolidation and ground glass, widespread reminding of pneumonia, uh, it's it may represent adenocarcinoma, and in that case, adenocarcinoma with lipidic growth. Uh, diffuse reticular pattern may be due to very diffuse lymphangitic spread, and you obviously have to look for the underlying tumor, which usually should be detectable on chest CT. In bronchial wall thickening, uh, which makes you think of chronic bronchitis, look for the tiny endobronchial lesion, which may cause uh, the inflammation uh, and the bronchial wall thickening, and that's usually squamous cell carcinoma or small cell carcinoma. And if you think you're dealing with lymph adenopathy only, sorry, um, think of small cell lung cancer and the differential would be um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. With this, I'm through, and I thank you for your attention. Unless there's any urgent question, I think we proceed, and we'll have a few minutes to discuss all the three presentations at the end of the session. It's now my pleasure uh, to invite uh, Professor Fred Prior from University of Arkansas to talk about improving lung cancer screening using radiomics. And I said this will probably follow Theresa's talk on which features